Let's take a listen. I grew up in New Orleans. I have lived in the Ninth Ward most of my trade cool life. Oh, boy. My father, he was in the Army. He was a trumpet player in the Army Band, and he also played the bugle. He was a good bugle player. I mean, he could play that bugle. When he played taps, you knew that the cat that was dead meant something to somebody. I mean, he played it like it was the blues. So like, bop do dwee, bop do zow. Mike just asked if he. What did you ask? Mike just asked if he had blackface on. No, it's it's uh, it's called audio blackface. It's called uh, it's like the, when you hear it, it's just like theater of the mind. Just picture Billy Crystal without blackface, mind you, somehow managing to embody the spirit of not a uh, not an old. Jazz man, and jazz man is always in quotes because it means black guy. Jazz man. He's not embodying the spirit of an old jazz man. He's in spirit. He's embodying the spirit of the most racist person on earth. He is somehow. This probably this could be like his audition for like Grand Wizard. This actually this this would be his campaign uh, video. If he was running, this would be the the thing they would show where it would be just like, like, I see a new vision for the Klan in 2006. Baboudoui, baboudoua, baboudoui, baboudoua, baboudoua. So when I was old enough, I wanted to play the horn, you know. I went up to my dad and I said, Pops, I want to be a musician. And he said to me, Lester, my boy, Face, come here. If you want to be a musician, play the clarinet, not the trumpet. I said, why, Pop? He said, hey, look, look at my lip. You see that little dent over my lip? And then you get all this callus and stuff. And I'm telling you, boy, the chicks don't like to kiss the trumpet players. So I took one look at that lip. And that's when I became a clarinet player. <laughs> Can't you dig that? I know that you're good. Ugh. Well, at least he's not going to say that anymore. He got that, can you dig that? I know that you could. I'm sure he won't go uh, to that again. He worked it in once. I'll give him one time. He worked it in once. So when World War II came bopping around and they got a little bit more interesting, they sent Bops to the South Pacific, not to play the horn, but to fight. I was 14 years old when he left, and I could play the licorice stick pretty good, so I got a job with the licorice stick. Ugh. First of all, clarinet is a stupid instrument. Anybody who plays it is mo I'm not going to say everyone who plays a clarinet is an idiot. The good chance if you play clarinet you're an idiot. Not everyone. Most. I'm at the Baca Brothers Funeral Home to play in the band, you know, that marches down the street, leading the casket on its way to heaven. Can you dig that? Okay, said it a second time. Let's keep let's count how many times he says, "Can you dig that?" It's two. What's the over under on this one for "Can you dig that?" I say seven. Now during the war, the funeral business was sad but steady. I was sixteen when I marched down the street when my dad come home from the war, leading his procession, the American flag draped on his coffin. My mother, my six brothers and sisters marching behind me as I strutted up the way on our way to bring him to his sleeping place. And I think it's the only time that Taps was ever played on the clarinet. Can you dig that? I knew that you could. Oh, there's three. And there was a red painted house on the corner right before the cemetery. And every, every time I would strut by the street, right, I would see this beautiful girl, sweet looking dress on the porch, and she would smile at me. And I would smile back because, you know, I ain't stupid, you know. Her name was Marjorie Green. We've been smiling. You hear the people in the audience just coughing? Like, just like you hear people in the audience just like, you can hear the rustling. People just wondering when this is going to stop. Smiling at each other for over 15 years now. 50 years. Can you the line. That? I knew that you could. There's four. 
That was our house. We raised three kids in this house here. He's also now gesturing to the set that's behind him, the comic relief set, which was very tastefully done. It was a, uh, a demolished New Orleans street. Which, first of all, was great for the for uh, for all the fun comedy everybody was uh, was doling out, you know. Uh, who wouldn't want to see Rita Rudner do her act in front of a demolished uh, a demolished home, reconstructed home, by the way, not even a real home, just uh, you know, comic relief people. It's like hitting it a little too hard. We get it. You're trying to raise money for New Orleans. You didn't have to recreate the street. We had a lot of laughs in this house. We made a lot of music in this house. My band would practice here. We'd jam here every day. You know, we'd just sit right here on the porch that used to be right over there. Yeah, and we Right over there. It's just, this is like the most offensive thing ever. We used to play on the thing right over there. What is that? We just play, you know, Margie and I. We've been through a lot of storms in this house, a lot of storms. So when we heard about this angry woman named Katrina, we said, that Oh, yuck. This angry woman named Katrina? Who wrote this for him? He probably wrote this himself. Like, Robin, uh, Robin, Whoopi, wait till you see what I wrote. And they're both like, That is terrible. But, eh, we're not much better. That we would stay, even though I know how hard it is to deal with an angry woman. Can you dig that? I knew that you That's number it. five. The wind started blowing real hard. You could feel the house, like, standing there fighting its ground. And then the rain come. The rain come hard and hard and harder. It was like, it was like being inside a Buddy Rich drum when he was beating on it. But the difference between God and Buddy Rich was... Buddy knew when it was time to quit. But um, boom. It was shaking so loud, you thought that the house was going to blow away, and then you'd wake up and the little munchkin cats would be outside, you know? <laughs> God, you dig that? Oh, boy. Uh, I knew I'm, that you could. There you go, number I six. I looked out the crack in the window, and I seen Edgar Clayton's Dodge Dart. Now, this Dodge Dart had been sitting on blocks in his yard for about ten years, but now it comes sailing down the street. Water pushing it so fast. I said, Marjorie Green, get your old ass upstairs. We get up the stairs faster than we did on our honeymoon night. <laughs> the water just tore into the house. Yeah, if I was, I was praying it was, it wasn't gonna wash away, you know, because I like going to the other side of town. I just didn't want to do it in my house. You see, can you dig that? There we go. And Took that long to get to the first actual joke. Congratulations, Billy. The five-minute mark, and you finally constructed something that actually resembles a joke. I knew that you could. Number seven. I grabbed whatever I could find. I, I grabbed this hat, my horn, and Marjorie Green. Now, I should just make mention, Billy Crystal is doing that look on his face, the same look that he does for every old character he plays. Like, where he just kind of, like, pinches his face. And he's, he's really just, I mean, the only, other way, the only way to say it is that he's actually, like, shuffling up on stage. I mean, it really, I'm amazed that Michael Richards is getting the amount of grief. Michael Richards, if he put an 800 number at the bottom of his rant, he'd be okay right now. If he put the comic relief number, if he held up a card that had the whole free number on it, nobody would be giving him uh, any grief. If he just did it as a character. That American flag that was on my pop's coffin. We made our way up to the window and I opened and I looked out and... Just saw rooftops, and I took Pop's flag and unwrapped the triangle that had been in all them years, you know, and I just started waving out of the window, you see, and I seen Lamar Guidry in his bass boat coming down the street. And he's... Ugh. I don't know if I can play any more of this. We heard Lamar Guidry in his bass boat. Ugh, but I, I mean, am I, I, I... Is this the worst thing I've ever played, Mike? Oh, we're not even halfway done. And he sees the flag, and I don't know how, but I got Marjorie out the window into the water. And Lamar, he dives into the water, he gets into the boat, and then me, wrapped in the flag, carrying my horn, because you never know when there's going to be a gig. 
We ended up at the Superdome with 30,000 other cats and it wasn't even a game. It was a shame. No food, no water, no toilets. No toilets. No toilets. No food, no water, no toilets. What are you, Archie Bunker? No toilets. No toilets. That's it. We're listening to the rest of this. No help. This ain't America. How the hell could you forget about us? I mean, I can forget my keys, what I had for breakfast, but I can never forget a city. You can never forget its people. Five days till the president got here. Five days. Well, it actually makes sense. I mean, Cheney took two days to tell us he shot his friend in the face, so what's another three? You know what I'm saying? Did there you dig where I'm coming from? Great. Am there you go. Nice. Look. This is actually this guy's actually getting me to feel bad for Bush. Cheap partisan jokes. Things a benefit. To shoot Cheney in the face. Bad Cheney joke. You know, Billy Crystal thought of that one back. When did it happen? March? That's probably the only reason they did this comic relief was so that he could tell that stupid joke. And Marjorie and I, we were put on a bus sent to Houston, Texas. Now, I don't mind Houston. I played there many gigs, years and years. But it's just not home. We got a small little place there that's kind of clean and okay. The only thing we have to decorate it is, is that American flag. But the way I feel now, I just, I can't put it up. America forgot about us. You see, the folks in Washington, they don't think that all the displaced how folks did he just in say, the Gulf area is a bad thing. How did he just say it Washington? Is, is that American flag. But the way I feel now, I just, I can't put it up. America forgot about us. You see, the folks in Washington, Washington, they don't think that all the displaced folks in the Gulf area is a bad thing. They don't want all of us to come back to New Orleans because come voting time, just like the other day, those folks in Washington won't have a home either. Because when angry, righteous folks come together, that's a whole other kind of tidal wave. Can you dig that? I knew that you could. Yay, let's all cheer at the election. We get it. Ugh. I can't play the rest of this. I'm starting to... Oh, I'm starting to feel... I mean, I'm feeling bad for Bush now. It's like, how much more suffering do the people of New Orleans have to take? They got this guy heaping the final indignity on them. Some uh, multi-millionaire shuffling up on stage pretending to be some old black guy. I'm sorry, I mean like, uh, to use the proper terminology, Afro-American, as uh, Michael Richards said, uh, proving that he, uh, oh, that Michael Richards apology. Holy guacamole. That was something else. I miss my band. I miss making the music. See, when you got the blues and you can't play them, it's tough. Sometimes I just close my eyes and I'm out there on the porch and we're all together again, playing jazz, kids watching us. Marjorie Green, sitting right over there, tapping her foot, smiling. I want to go home, but there's no home to go home to. That's what makes it a tad difficile, as the French say. Hold on. Now listen, I'm I, just I'm, an old... I can't even... I'll be stopping every 15 seconds. A tad difficile. I got to hear that again. I don't know. Foot, smiling. I want to go home, but there's no home to go home to. That's what makes it a tad difficile, as the French say. Now listen, I'm just an old clarinet man, you know. Ugh. But I got an idea, Mr. Bush. Stop your war for one day. Give New Orleans the bread it costs to fight that one day and use it to rebuild us. Yeah, great idea. Let's stop the war for one, one day. day. 
That's all one day, maybe two days. That's it. Stop. You can't stop a war for a day. We're not spending any money today. Sorry. Billy Crystal uh, was doing this racist thing, and he told us to, uh, we got to stop the war. This guy's got to eat over there. So how about you end the war, you dope? Stop the war for a day. And then start it back up. Stop the war. Stop blowing up Iraq and start building up New Orleans. Yeah. Why don't you blow up Billy Crystal's house? I respect you, Mr. Bush. I do. Because you're the leader of the band. But damn, I don't think you really get it. See, you got a place to sleep that's yours. For a couple of years, anyway. Oh. Just think what it's like for us. Do you understand that, Mr. Bush? No. Do you? Do you know what it means? Oh, here we go. To miss New Orleans. Hey, where's my suicide machine? Each night and okay, day. Okay, right in this vein right here, please. I know I'm not uh, wrong. Hook the IV up. The feeling's getting stronger the longer I stay away. Mr. Moss colored vines to tall sugar pines where mocking boys come mocking to- boys like this like they can't a song of the south it can't even they can't even do song of the like song of the south rightfully has been driven out of circulation It's only going to be available, I think, as a historical document uh, next year. You got this guy up here on stage at a benefit, doing the talking about the turlet and the the mocking boys. How is he not being driven out of the, uh, his, his 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 mansion? How could, was he on Leno apologizing last night? <laughs> 